What's up EBRs? I hope you guys are having an awesome day. Um, Brent here and today I am reviewing the M2S All-Terrain R750. And I'm actually really excited to be able to review this bike um, because I know a lot of you guys have asked for reviews from M2S. So this is really exciting for me. I'm very happy, very excited to be able to review this thing uh, with you guys here today. This has been a really fun bike to test. I've only put a few miles on it, ridden around for just a little bit, but it is it is quite fun and there's a lot of options with this bike. Um, so this one right here, the, this particular model, runs for $1,750. However, there's a lot of different options when it comes to frame sizes and colors and even frame styles. So the one that I have, the one that came to me, this is the blue color and it is the 17 inch frame, but they also have an 18 inch step through frame. So this is a, you know, kind of a traditional high step, but even with this, the standover height is actually pretty low because of the swooping top bar right here, which is really nice. So even me, with like a, I have a 32 inch inseam, I'm able to put my feet um, flat on the ground while standing over that top tube, which is pretty cool. They have a uh, 20 inch version and a 22 inch extra large frame as well. So a lot of different options there with the frame sizes. Now, <laughs> one cab got about that though is M2S is kind of a newer company. And what comes along with that is, you know, they struggle a little bit with keeping, uh, keeping inventory. So a lot of times they run out of stock. Even right now, I checked the website before I actually started filming this review here today. And they're out of, you know, probably 70% of their inventory. Like they have the medium here in a black. I think they have like a few other options, but you know, overall I think they have like uh, almost 10 different options for this particular model. Most of them are sold out right now. And I talked with Court, and actually that's been his experience as well. You know, again, just newer company and they're still kind of struggling, I think, to just to keep up with the demand, which I guess in the end is kind of a good thing. So maybe one just real quick recommendation is if this bike does end up working for you here at the end of the review, if there is a model that is in stock that you like with the frame size and the color, it might be a good idea just to pick it up like right away before it sells out. Um, also with this, we do have five different color options. So again, there we have this, this is like a gloss blue. I'm trying to get it so it kind of catches the light here. Um, it's reflective and it's a, it's a nice paint job here. I think this will actually show up pretty well at night. There's kind of like speckly, uh, like reflective bits in the paint as well. It actually looks pretty nice. So we've got the blue, we've got black, we've got white, green and gray. But again, like I said, kind of same thing with the uh, frame sizes. A lot of those colors are out of stock right now. So yeah. Um, M2S also is a direct order only company. So just real quick to kind of you know recap on some of the pros and cons here of, of direct order only. Basically that means these guys don't have any physical brick and mortar shop. So the, the best part about that, typically speaking in my experience here, is that with a direct order only company, the price point is going to be um, quite a bit lower than a brick and mortar shop. And again, here with this bike, we got 1750 for this model. The standard model comes with a 16 amp hour battery right here in the down tube. Uh, you can also save, I think 150 bucks uh, to go with a 10 amp hour battery right here. And that's, so that'll run for 1600. Or you can spend an extra 250 bucks to upgrade to a massive 21 amp hour battery. And that will be uh, two grand even with that. So yeah, price point definitely probably a little bit better than a brick and mortar shop. However, there's, there are a couple uh, downsides or potential downsides at least that can come with direct order only. First and foremost, it means that, you know, I'm gonna have to put this bike together myself. A lot of times with direct order only, that can be tricky. It can be time consuming and sometimes the pieces don't match quite right. But with this bike, the, man, the, the, the assembly experience was mwah. Like these guys did a really good job with packaging. Um, I actually ran into a, uh, a former on our forums, uh, if you guys haven't seen those yet, really great point of information on the electricbikereview.com website. You know, me and Court, we try to do the very best that we can to really show you guys just everything there is, you know, about these bikes and review them. But look, we're not perfect. Sometimes we miss things and, you know, you guys really help to kind of fill in those gaps sometimes. And the forums, again, just great source of information. So anyways, one of the forumers a while back actually bought this same bike and uh, I'll do an overlay here for that, but he was talking about the, the packaging experience for him was not that great. So maybe M2S actually heard that, maybe they saw it because for me, my experience was really, really good and it sounds like they have changed their process. So the packaging for this, 
Um, first of all, it was just packaged really well. Uh, nothing was scratched or dented when I got it. Assembly only took me like 15 minutes altogether. Almost everything was assembled. The rear rack was on, the front fender was on, or sorry, no, the rear fender was on. The only thing I had to really assemble was putting the handlebars on, putting the tire on, and that's pretty much it. So just another kind of little small tidbit about, about the assembly that I really liked was, uh, and this is a small thing, but the zip ties that M2S use are, they're pretty thin. They're strong enough to hold everything together, but not so thick that I can't cut them. You know, because I use like really tiny scissors to try to get this stuff off because I don't want to scratch the paint. And uh, sometimes it's just difficult to cut the zip ties, but again here, perfect really really well done another little small thing is they actually pre-filled these tires with air so i didn't even have to fill this up so seriously from the time that i actually cut the box open to the time that i assembled it time that i got riding this thing was like 15 minutes so really good experience overall with this bike for assembly packaging all that stuff and i, and I dig that quite a bit um kind of last thing that can be an issue with direct order only is going to be the communication you know sometimes there's a little bit of a communication barrier depending on where the company is located if it's overseas not the issue with m2s these guys are knowledgeable about their bikes they are friendly they answer their phone promptly so um yeah good experience overall and you know i always want to really kind of delineate this stuff for you guys this kind of unbox experience what it's like to communicate with the company because i think for a lot of times this might be like one of the only main reviews that you guys are able to see maybe one of the only kind of uh, videos that has like tips on assembly. So I want to just try to lay out this whole experience as, as really comprehensively as I can for you guys. So yeah, with that said, um, there's one last kind of thing I really want to talk about with this bike overall before I dive into the specs. And that is, this is going to be a class uh, three, really, maybe even a class four out of the box. So the top speeds here are going to be anywhere from 28 miles per hour plus or 33 miles per hour plus, depending on the settings that it comes with from the factory. And I talked with the folks over at M2S, and it sounds like from the factory, this thing comes in off-road mode, which is basically the unlocked mode where it's, you know, the top speed is almost limitless. It's, you know, 33 miles per hour plus. So that's gonna make this really like an unregulated bike. Um, and it's just gonna make it, you know, illegal to ride in a lot of areas. So I really strongly advise to just check with kind of state, local laws, stuff like that. Um, before riding. I just don't want anybody getting hurt, um, getting into any sort of legal trouble. Of course, the other option is, you know, and I'll show you guys how to do this here later on in the settings, but I could lower the top speed on this to turn it into a class two where the top speed is 20 miles per hour. So that's definitely an option as well. Kind of defeats the purpose though, since this thing does go so fast. So, you know, pros and cons of that, you guys have to make your own decisions. Just figure out what you want to do, but I definitely wanted to just give that strong caution that this is going to be illegal in a lot of setups so yeah so please keep that in mind as we go over kind of the speed limits here the power and stuff like that with this bike um, speaking of power i do want to start here with this motor because this is a really interesting setup with this motor so this is a buffing 750 watt geared hub motor in the rear wheel 80 newton meters of torque um, those stats are relatively standard for the Bafang 750 watt motors that I've tested before. However, this motor is custom geared here from M2S and it is geared for speed and it is evident that it is geared for speed. And what I mean by that is that when I first start out with this bike, when I first start pedaling, the torque here is just, it's not that great. It's kind of sluggish off the start, off the line. However, the faster I go, as this motor starts getting into the, the mid and higher RPMs, it starts to really pick up speed and this motor pulls pretty hard all the way up to about 26 miles per hour uh, before it kind of topped out for me. So I'm a 200 pound rider, well about 190 pounds now. I'm carrying, you know, I carry my backpack with me and it's a little bit light right now, but I typically got a couple lenses in here, like 30 pounds of gear, I got my, my DSLR, all my tools, you know accessories gopro so it's a lot of extra weight but even with that i mean i was able to get up to 26 miles per hour pretty easily with this um on flat ground and for me that's that's pretty impressive i, I really enjoyed that and it was it was quite fun so but while we're talking about speed here so what's interesting with this is we've got a 36 tooth chain ring up here in the front um 11 to 32 back here in the spread we got a shimano acera um um, derailleur, which is which is nice. This is actually kind of a few upgrades um, above the Shimano Tourney, which is the most entry-level derailleur. So here's a little shot of that real quick. However, um, the gearing here kind of speaks mountain bike to me. Um, however, the top speed is really saying, hey, 
this is meant for the road to go fast. So like when I'm pedaling this thing at around, eh, I'd say 23 miles an hour, 22 miles an hour, I really feel like that's kind of where the gearing tops out for me. And above that speed, I feel like I'm really just beating, beating eggs in my legs, man. I'm just chasing my legs to try to keep up. Um, and which kind of makes me just have to rely on the throttle if I want to go faster than 22, 23 miles an hour. So the gearing feels a little bit off. On the flip side though, um, you know, because this thing does have lower torque at the low RPMs, maybe M2S did that on purpose. Maybe that was designed to kind of give the rider, to give me a little bit more, mm, you know, power in the low end to assist it, you know, up to those top speeds. So yeah, you know, maybe it's just a preference thing, but I definitely wanted to call that out. And here with the derailleur down here, something I like about this is the steel derailleur guard right here. So this kind of comes down, helps really protect the derailleur from getting scratched up, especially if it does fall over. It also is going to help protect the power cable that goes into the motor here just a little bit. Um, you know, maybe not a ton, but it will provide some protection for sure. And I do dig that. While we're down here, just check out the wiring. These guys did a really good job with their wire management. I really, really like this. The frame is just clean. There are some externally routed, uh, externally routed wires up here in the front, but you can see they disappear into the frame right here in the down tube. They're gonna go all the way down and they're gonna pop out right about there, which is gonna leave it a little bit exposed. But you know, that's pretty common and I think that's fine in my opinion, but it just, it does make for a really clean bike. And I even like how, I mean, these just, just, just the little details, you know, that these guys took, um, Man, life is too short for messy cables in my opinion. Like I just love it when stuff is like super neat and tidy like this. He's got a little zip ties here. It just looks clean. I like that. So over here on the other side of this bike, we got 180 millimeter uh, discs. These are hydraulic disc brakes in the rear. And they are 180 millimeter discs up here in the front. So hydraulic disc brakes, I love that. Um, they just have more stopping power generally speaking compared to mechanical disc brakes and one thing i really do like about hydraulic disc brakes too is that let's see if we can get a uh, so hopefully you guys can see that little pin right there so this can be actually adjusted i can let these let these brake levers in i can bring them in or i can let them out just to really customize it fine tune it to really exactly how i want so i dig that here in the front, we've got this Mozo suspension here, 100 millimeters of travel, and we do have preload adjusts on this side. So I really dig this because again, I'm kind of a heavier rider, so being able to adjust a preload, stiffen the shock so I don't get as much dive when I break, um, just make them a little bit more solid for me. I dig that. And on this side, we do have a compression clicker with lockout. So if I flick this thing all the way over to the other side, Basically, just going to turn off the shocks, it's going to lock them so that they're going to be dead. And that's just going to increase efficiency if I'm going to be on, I mean, I probably wouldn't do it for stuff like this, but you know, anything where it's like maybe just pavement, really, really clean, smooth roads, maybe I don't need the shocks. I prefer to have the efficiency, not losing that, that power and momentum and the, and the suspension. I could do that. The fenders here. Plastic fenders, um, you know, these can maybe get a, bit, get a little bit hot in the sun. They can warp uh, maybe a little bit. They are going to be more lightweight compared to steel fenders and compared to aluminum fenders, but they aren't as rigid and they will rattle around a little bit. And I have noticed some rattling here, especially with this rear fender. Um, and really because this thing only has one attachment point, guys. This, is, this, is, this fender here in the back, it only attaches to the seat post. And as you can see, there's just, there's no other attachments to the frame, even though there are bosses down here for attachment points. So this, you know, it's funny because, I mean, that rear fender to me, it looks dope. Like I like the way it looks, but the way it performs, I don't like. It's just, it bounces, it hits the rear rack, it makes noise. Um, also, I mean, again, because it attaches to the, to the seat post here, uh, you know, it's going to increase the minimum saddle height if I want to use this because Look, there's this you know, one inch gap right here. And even still, if I try to lower the saddle, I mean, thankfully it does have a quick release so I can adjust this on the fly, but check this out. When I move the saddle up and down, it's gonna move that rear fender as well. So I'm gonna have to, you know, if I wanna adjust one, I really am going to need to adjust the other. And furthermore, this is really kind of as, you know, let's actually open this up, there we go. So this is as low as the saddle goes. This is the minimum saddle height. You can see it kind of obstruct is obstructed by the rear rack right here. 
see if we can get a better shot. Yeah, so the rear rack or the rear rack kind of just gets gets in the way of the saddle, so it can't drop all the way. It looks like if I wanted to, I could adjust this rack. I could probably loosen these up. I could pivot pivot the rack back like this, angle it back, but then it's going to be angled backwards, and my cargo will be more susceptible to you know to falling off. That kind of defeats the purpose. I don't want to do that. So just just a little little something to call out right there. Just going to lock that back up. But yeah, for me, I really do like the, the sloped frame though. Um, again, 32 inch inseam for me, it allows me to put my feet flat on the ground while I'm standing over it. It would be cool if I could put my feet flat on the ground while in the saddle if I wanted to, if I wanted to treat this like a scooter or a moped, just drop the saddle all the way. But you know, whatever, that's okay. Not a big deal. This headlight up here, this is a Spaninga Kendo Plus headlight. Um, cool thing about this, this does attach to, or is this, it, it's integrated into the electronics and into the battery right here. So there's never going to be a dead battery with this, nothing to replace, and I can turn it on and off with the independent button pad, which I'll show you guys here in a few minutes. So that's, that's dope. I like that. However, this headlamp is attached to the arch here on the suspension. So, you know, it's going to rattle around a little bit more compared to what's actually attached to the frame because this is going to be unsuspended weight versus being suspended weight by the suspension up here on the frame. Real quick, let's talk about these wheels uh, and these tires. So we got 26 inch wheels here um, and these fat tires are four inches wide. They're, they're huge, huge tires, huge tire patch, which is great for, you know, this increased air volume, right? It's going to make for even a cushier ride. Um, these can be aired down all the way to 5 PSI, which is going to flatten the tire out, give an even wider tire patch, which would be great for if I want to take this through snow, through water, through mud, um, anything that really necessitates even more traction here. However, because these things are so beefy, um, you know, they, they do have a lot of rolling resistance and it is going to slow the bike down a little bit and they're heavy, first of all. I mean, this bike weighs 69 pounds overall. It's a hefty bike, guys. This is really a heavy bike. Um, these tires are going, to, and these wheels are going to add um, to that weight overall. I mean, they are punched out rims, so that's going to save a little bit of weight, but yeah, overall they are heavy. Again, I guess on the other flip side, another, another positive though of these wheels, or rather of these tires is, because they're heavy, when I'm going um, at higher speeds, it just this thing really wants to stay upright. It, it's it's a really stable bike, especially with these handlebars, uh, 710 millimeters in length. It just it feels like a stable bike, and I think it's going to be really important at those higher speeds. So, yeah, I do like that. Um, adjustable length kickstand down here and this is placed for me i think in the right position towards the back so as you can see i can turn these cranks and check it out no pedal lock which is great because it's kind of frustrating when the kickstands are like right here right by the right by the cranks and um, they just get i get pedal lock all the time that can be a little annoying so this battery um again this is the 16 amp it's 48 volt 16 amp about 770 watt hours for this battery right here and this is the standard battery that comes along with the R750. Again, I could choose to downgrade to a 10 amp battery if I didn't need as much juice, or if I was going for really long distances, whap, I could, I could crank it up all the way to 21 amps. So that's, that's just, that's, that's a lot of juice, man. Um, <laughs> that's just, that's a lot of juice. So let me grab the uh, keys real quick here. Okay, so on this battery, the, there's actually a little power button on the top and it's cool because it just gives a quick little glance at how much battery is left. It's only a four, uh, little four bar indicator, but if I don't want to turn on the bike, hit that, see how much is left. There is a USB type A, full size type A port right there, which is cool. I can charge electronics on the go. Love that. And it is located at the top as well instead of at the bottom, which means that it's just less, uh, less cord travel. You know, if I want to put something on the handlebars. Um, also, it just means it's probably going to stay out of the way of the cranks, which is good. Don't want to damage the battery. Over here on this side, the uh, key, the keyhole is going to be up here at the top. That's good for me because, again, it is going to be out of the way of the cranks. No way of damaging it from up here. Charging port, though, it is down here in the bottom. And there is potential, I think, for this to get uh, interference with the cranks. So, really, I charge this, this battery off the bike. Uh, I did charge it up and I just, I don't want to charge it while it's on the bike. I don't want to risk hurting the battery, um, getting it hit by the cranks. Just don't want that to happen. So 
Um, also, I did not have to keep the keys in here to turn this, to have this active, which is great. So to unlock this, just a quick turn, pull this lever and it slides out really just like that. This is heavy. <laughs> this is like, this is like nine pounds or something. This is, this is a big battery. Um, 21 amp hour, I'm sure is going to be even heavier. This is what it looks like. Try to flip it around for you guys here. That's the other side. That's where it connects. Let's get a better shot there. And that's where it connects to the bike. So let's put this thing back in real quick and I will show you the charger. If I can do this one-handed, which there's no promises. There we go. So to put this back in, I do have to turn the key actually in order to get it in. So I turn the key. There we go. Give a little push. Take the key out. Make sure it's secure. Yeah, I'm good to go. Uh, this charger is actually a pretty cool talking point, guys. Uh, this is a 5 amp charger right here. So this thing is pretty powerful. Um, it charges the bike up way quicker than the average 2 amp output chargers, which is wonderful. There's also a built-in fan and it does a wonderful job of expelling the heat from the from the housing right here and i was really impressed with just how cool this thing stayed at five amps of output you know uh, through the duration of charging i, I kind of was in the room the whole time really cool i like the charger it is big though uh, so it might be a little bit difficult to put that in a bag or something but i think it's definitely worth it for that five amp hours there all right let's talk about the control center up here to turn this on uh, whenever the battery again whenever the battery is actually inserted this is going to be live so the only thing i have to do is just do a long press of the power button and the display will whoop, come to life there we go so i want to show you guys something real quick um let's just say i have the lights on i'm out riding i'm in pedal assist level five there's about a five minute timeout on this before it shuts off automatically um I can change out in the back end of the settings, which you know, I'll show you here in just a second. But let's just say this thing times out or you know, I'm, in, I'm in the dark, whatever, and I turn, off, I turn this thing off. When I turn it back on, it's going to revert back to kind of the factory settings. Pedal assist level one, lights turned off. This is what I get. And I wish it had memory to kind of save whatever my settings were that I left because if I put them there, I probably want them there, right? Like that would make sense. Uh, but one thing, one of the things I really like about this display and the electronics and how this all works is the throttle here is going to be live whenever the bike is turned on. So this is pedal assist level one. You'll see it's, it'll move with the throttle. Um, even if, oops, let's put that back. Even if I, if I turn it to pedal assist level zero, so the cadence sensor is off. This has a 12 magnet cadence sensor right down there. This is actually a really responsive cadence sensor. Um, I was impressed with really just how quickly this thing starts. Just a fraction of the turn of the cranks and this cadence sensor will activate. It is a little sluggish to cut power though. Um, thankfully, there are motor inhibitors built into the brakes. So if I depress either of these brake levers, it will cut power to the motor, just ensuring the shortest possible stopping distance. So that's nice. But yeah, I love that the throttle is live at zero miles per hour in all pedal assist modes. And it gives me full access to full power on tap. So, you know, pedal assist level zero, I have 100% power from the motor if I want to hit the throttle, which is great. Um, I use this a lot for, if I'm going to be like, at a, at a crosswalk especially, I don't even want to bother with the pedal assist. I want to hit the throttle. I, want to get, I just want to get out of the street as quickly as possible. Um, another thing I use this for a lot is stairs. So <laughs> being able to have it live at zero miles per hour means I can just put this thing on the stairs, right? Is hit the throttle a little bit and the bike is just, just going to assist itself up the stairs. And look, that may not always be so important, but for a 70, 69, 69.2 pound bike, yes, I appreciate that a lot. It is important to me. All right, back to this thing. Um, so this is a kind of a minimal, minimal, I would say, you know, control center, this little display right here. It really is providing me the pertinent information, which I appreciate, I like that. It is non-adjustable without tools, which, which means I can't angle it to avoid glare, and I can't take it off again without tools. So this might get a little bit scratched up if I leave it at a bike rack. Up here on the top, on default, is going to display speed. And then up here towards the top, we'll have uh, the, the current speed. Battery indicator, it is a five tick battery indicator. So 20% increments, not super precise. The pedal assist level is going to be zero through nine. 
and then a tripometer. However, I can change a lot of this simply by tapping the power button once. So a short tap, and it's going to go to average speed. Short tap again, max speed. All right, 28.9, all right, I was moving. Uh, <laughs> hit it again, average speed. Oh wait, no, sorry, uh, what else is it changing? I think it changes tripometer, odometer. Yeah, down there we can see now it's changing odometer. Hit it again, trip timer. Hit it again, I don't know what that is. Hit it again, and it's going to just revert back to whatever it, the normal settings are. So cool that I can change a lot of the options here with this uh, independent button pad. To go up and down through the pedal assist modes, it's just going to be plus and minus right here, plus and minus button. And then that's going to get me all the way up to pedal assist level nine or all the way down to pedal assist level zero. If I hold the plus button right here, that's how I activate the lights, the front headlight and the backlight. Okay, so now the backlight is on. Here's that headlamp. And I am going to take this um, back out for you guys tonight because uh, I really want to get some, some beam shots for you guys so you can see what this thing looks like. And here in the back, I forgot to mention this, we're, there actually is a, another light um, underneath the saddle. This is a Selly Royale little button cell bike. Single press and it will do uh, blink, another press and it will do steady, another press turns it off. And there's actually a third light in the back. This is another independent light. And there's just a switch right here at the bottom. Let's see, hopefully that's showing up for you guys. A little switch right here. Flip that on and it's just going to be a little steady on, just one, one little single LED. Not super bright, but it is something else to help increase visibility. Visibility overall on this bike is going to be not super bad. It's gonna be okay actually from the front and the rear. Lateral visibility, meh, it's okay. There are reflectors here in the wheel. Um, there's no reflective sidewalls, so visibility from the side is minimal, I would say. The frame with that gloss, I think that should reflect light a little bit, so that's kind of cool. I like this, that's why I like this color here. So back to this. To turn this off, I will hold the plus button again. If I hold the minus button on this, it's going to enter walk mode, which is barely even moving because I'm actually giving it resistance, but I like that. Wait, is it not working? What's going on? Eh, I might have actually turned it off, guys. Sorry, I was messing with the settings earlier, but uh, if you don't mess with the settings, if you hit the minus button, that's how normally it activates uh, walk mode. But you can actually, in the settings here, I can change the top speed for the walk mode and all that stuff. So before I show you the settings, though, um, how to get into that, I do want to just point out one thing here with this uh, button pad. I want to see if I can get this a good shot for you guys here. So check out these buttons. Can you see how there's a gap between the kind of this top piece and that bottom. Oh yeah, look at that. It's, I mean, just a little bit of pressure and that thing could just, just snap off, break a, break a button altogether. You know, I don't really wear long sleeve shirts, maybe in the winter I will. So a long sleeve shirt, a jacket, maybe even a fingernail could. So yeah, I just say really, really be careful with that because that would really suck to, to ruin this. So, okay. So to get into settings here, it's going to be a quick double tap like this of the power button, but boom. And then that's going to get you into settings. If I want to switch between the settings and the menu here, I'm just going to push the power button again. That's my backlight here again. This is the timer where it says off up here. So it's going to be after five minutes, this thing will turn off. Uh, this is the wheel size, it's going to be 26 inches. This is the voltage. I'm just going to leave this alone. It's a 48 volt. And this is the password. So the password to, to change the top speed and to just kind of get even deeper in the settings is going to be 1919. So I'm gonna hit plus for one, like this. I'm gonna hit the power button to go to the next one. Hit minus for nine, power button plus, power button minus, and then power button again. And now I can edit the top speed. So I, I don't know what the deal is here. I mean, this says 62 miles per hour top speed, so maybe it's just unlimited, right? But I could bring this down, let's see, all the way. Let's see if we can bring it down to 20 here. Let's just make sure it works for you guys. There we go, 20 miles per hour. So if I wanted to, I could make this a class two bike. Um, and again, just going back to just kind of, you know, being careful, being safe, being smart about riding, you know, that might be a good option if you really just want to be in regulation with the law, not get in trouble, not be liable civilly, you know, if you guys get into an accident, because really, again, like that's just the last thing I'd want to happen is you, you, oh, cool review, I go buy this bike and, and you know, you don't turn the settings off or you don't adjust the top speed. So please just be careful again. I just want to re reiterate that again, that a lot of configurations here, this is going to be a class three, 
arguably probably a class four really unregulated bike and that's going to be illegal to ride pretty much everywhere honestly except for like an ohv park um, or private property so yeah so I actually just set this to 20 miles per hour it automatically timed out and yeah that's pretty much it so i again i do like this button pad it has kind of tactile feedback it works pretty well i like it i am worried about the, the buttons coming off so again just kind of something to watch out for let's see i think that's about it folks um maybe a few other quick things I do appreciate this uh, kind of double-sided chain guard right here. It is plastic, so it's not going to be super durable. A strike might end up breaking it, but it's going to help keep the chain from popping off towards the inside or the outside. Um, what else did I wanted to point out here? Oh, the saddle. Yeah, so this Celly Royale looking saddle. This is comfy. Uh, it's got a gel kind of insert. It's just it's it's cushy. It's comfortable. It's comfortable. It's like a nice blend of you know. It's not too active. It's not too relaxed. It's just it's a good blend. I like the saddle. And yeah, I think that's it. I always, I always feel like I just want to talk about more and more and more, but let's get to the ride portion, show you guys this bike in action, and if there are any other points, we'll throw them in there. So see you in a minute. So this kind of frontward facing shot is mostly just to give you guys a little bit of perspective of what this bike looks like in action. I wanted to start by showing some off-road clips because I really do think this is an off-road capable electric bike, especially with the 100 millimeters of suspension and because of those big 4-inch wide fat tires with tons of air volume. It makes for a cushy ride. The hydraulic disc brakes do a really good job of bringing this thing to a stop very quickly. So yeah, very off-road capable, so I will let this clip go ahead and just run out real quick. And of course, we've got to get some suspension shots in there as well, right? This is where the slow-mo really comes in handy, in my opinion, because you can see the shocks just working to really try to dampen the uh, the, the, the blows, just these these heavy bumps and stuff like I'm doing right here. That's not a big jump or anything, but you can you can see the you know the pistons moving in the suspension. Honestly, I just think it's a cool shot, and I think it's a good visual example of what this thing looks like in action. And then one more, here we go. Yep, just a few other, these are actually pretty big jarring, um, just kind of divots in the ground. And you know, this, this bike did a good job of really just kind of soaking it up. So here I'm just going to switch through the gears real quick. Again, this is the Shimano Acera derailleur. I also want to start and stop pedaling so you guys can hear this motor, hear the latency from the time that I start pedaling to the time the motor actually delivers power, and that slight delay from the time that I stop pedaling and the power actually cuts off. And this is going to be just a little bit of a speed test here. This is pretty local to where I'm at. I went ahead and kind of just checked around to see how much traffic there was before I did this, but I wanted to really show you guys just how quickly this bike can pick up speed and get up to that 26, 28 mile per hour mark without much effort at all. So you guys probably saw how fast that was. I was definitely taking a risk doing that. Really just wanted to show you guys how fast this thing can go, how quickly. Again, torque at the low RPMs, not very good. Torque on the mid power band and high power bands, pretty good. And they help get me up to 26 to 28 miles per hour relatively easily without too much pedaling and I can actually maintain that speed without pedaling. So again, is this going to be legal to ride on the streets at those speeds? Probably not. 
definitely want to check with local and state regulations and laws, stuff like that. But if this was private property in OHV Park, that would just be so fun. All right, so I want to show you guys real quick before I close out this video, just what this bike looks like at night. Try to show you the beam pattern. This is going to be shot on a GoPro Hero 4 with a max ISO of 6400. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit, uh, a little bit noisy this picture, but figure it'd be better than nothing. So here we go. So we've got the headlight on right here. This is the backlight, and you know, just to give you an idea that that van in front of me, probably about I don't know, 35, 40 feet away, and you can kind of see the beam just bounce off of it. Um, but if I angle this beam down a little bit, just to kind of show you the pattern. Like I was saying, it's kind of striated, uh, not, you know, not the greatest pattern for actually navigating at night but it does a good job of just increasing overall visibility. And in the back here, this is what the Selly Royale little button cell uh, tail light looks like right here. And then if I press it again, it will be a steady on like this. And if I press it again, it will be off. Actually, I'm gonna turn it on because I'm gonna keep riding here. Uh, but then again, just to kind of reiterate, you know, the lateral visibility, as you can see, is going to be quite low from the side. There's really, you know, this light, it doesn't, it doesn't wrap around or anything. So there's no light that shines out from the sides. Um, so it's just something to kind of be mindful of. I'm going to do one more quick shot, guys. I'm going to show you this thing in a little bit darker setting. Like if I was in, you know, the forest and off-road trail and uh, try to give you an idea of what that would look like. Okay, so even with an ISO up at 6400 here on this GoPro, it's having a really hard time detecting the light. Um, so just for reference here, that beam is probably just 10 feet in front of the bike, not very far at all. If I start to turn the, the handlebars so it shoots into the distance, it pretty much disappears on this camera. But yeah, you know, that's just what it looks like. Kind of give you an idea. Same thing. Let's try to go one more time here in the back. And yeah, that's what we got. All right, guys, that is it for the M2S All-Terrain R750 electric bike review. Again, just real quick to recap, this is a sweet bike that has a high top speed and a powerful motor that does pull pretty hard in the mid and the high RPMs. It really helps me get to that high top speed of 26 miles per hour. The fat tires along with the 100 millimeters of suspension here in the front, it makes for a cushy ride. The fat tires make, um, uh, makes it very stable too, um, along with these, these wide handlebars. It just feels really stable even at those high speeds. Um, and fat tires, again, would be great for going through snow, mud, sand, anything that's like real soggy terrain. However, I do want to just caution one last time that in a lot of configurations, this bike is going to be illegal to ride in most areas besides an OHV park or private property. So, you know, just be sure to check with local laws and regulations. And if you guys do want to turn this into a class two bike, you can do that in the settings like I showed you earlier. So, yeah, I love that M2S has a lot of different frame options for this, frame sizes, step through high step, um, different colors. That's pretty sweet. But again, they are a little bit short on inventory, at least right now. So maybe they'll get more in in the future. But I think that just kind of goes along with somewhat of a younger company. These guys have only been around for 2017. Um, but for that, they do offer a lot of different types of electric bikes. So that's really cool. Um, yeah, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that review. If you are going out to ride, ride safe. Have fun. For the full ride-up, head over to electricbikereview.com. And if you do want to know more about the forums, I'm going to leave a link in the write-up. So check the forums out if you have any other questions, if you just want more information, if you want to join the community kind of in a, um, you know, just more involved, in a more involved way. Like the forums is kind of a cool way to do that. So I'll see you guys either in the forums, I'll see you in the comments or the next video. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.